greetings. I hope you're good and well. I'm doing a comparison today for a book called Limitless, aka The Dark Fields, and its film adaptation. I saw the film Limitless back in uh, 2012 or thereabouts, and I loved it. It's one of my favourite films. I later discovered that it's based on a book called The Dark Fields. So I recently read the book and this video is basically going to be a comparison between the book and the film and I'm going to work out which one's better, the book or the film. I'm going to start off by listing some differences between the two. There's going to be some mild spoilers as I, as I list the differences, so if you haven't seen the film or the book, just be aware of that. Um, the, the book was published in 2001 and the film was released in 2011, I believe. So basically the film adaptation came a whole decade after the book was released. So uh, the first difference I'm going to mention is um, the book starts off with the main protagonist sitting in a motel room in Canada. Whereas the, the opening scene for the film, the main protagonist is standing on a ledge in a hotel or in a big apartment block and he's thinking about jumping off. That's, that's, that's difference number one. And in the novel, the, the drug is called MDT-48, whereas in the film it's called EZT. And in the book, the, the tablets are actually white, not clear. As not transparent as they are in the film. In the film, the, the main character finds the, the stash of drugs in a cooker in his, in his um, ex-brother-in-law's apartment. In the book, he, he goes to the ex-brother-in-law's apartment, but he, he finds the stash of drugs up in, a, up in the ceiling in the bedroom. That's another difference. And in the book, the, the character has a much stronger relationship with the, the big businessman which is played by Robert De Niro in the film. I can't remember his name now. Uh, oh, Van Loon, sorry. Van Loon, the businessman. He actually goes to Van Loon's apartment several times uh, in the novel. Whereas in the film, he, he only kind of gets to, He becomes friends with him or in a so... Uh, an acquaintance with him but they don't get too close but in the book they do get pretty close and in the book Van Loon also has a daughter that's quite young and good looking and it's he almost kind of starts to hit on his daughter a bit in the book so that's another difference there also I noticed in the book that the scene in the film where the Russian gangster injects himself with EZT it is not there and, and that bit where he, he kills the Russian gangster and there's blood seeping out across the floor and he starts licking the blood to get a dose of the drug that's not in the book either I notice that's completely absent also um, it's worth mentioning that the ending of the book is radically different from the film again a, a spoiler alert here if you haven't seen the film but in the film the main protagonist ends up running for president that doesn't happen in the book at all um, the, it, at the, the ending in the book it, it's he observes that the president is on the drug but he doesn't end up running for president so that's another big difference there I'm tempted to say that the book is a little bit long drawn out and pedantic it seemed to go over and over minute details a bit too much and it extrapolates each scene a bit too much whereas the film is much more streamlined. I would describe the film as like an edited version of the story that only includes the essential parts so if you want a streamlined version of the story just, just watch the film. The, 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 the book drags on a little bit However, the Russian gangster it is written very well in the book. Well, as, as I read the novel, the Russian gangster character did scare me. It, it, he's a very intimidating character in the book, and it, the kind of fear factor is portrayed very well. 
Um, credit to the author there. He, that, the Russian is very scary and very tense, and he did a good job of um, putting that character down on the page. I'm tempted to say that the prose of the book is a little bit rigid. I, I sensed a bit of rigidity there when, when reading the book. However, there are two scenes in the book that are written in a very creative way. The first one is, again, if you've seen the film, you'll remember the scene where the main character goes out clubbing. He, he hits the clubs whilst on EZT. And where he's taken the drugs so much, he starts to black out and he, he kind of just goes on a rampage. He goes on a big bar crawl and he picks up women and stuff and he, his memory starts to suffer and he blacks out. This scene is, is expertly written in the book and it's, it's very trippy, it's very surreal and it's very creatively written. So it, that, that part certainly isn't rigid. And there's another scene in the book where um, he's kind of, I think he's running out of the drug and he's kind of trying, he's either going cold turkey or he, he can't get hold of any more. And he's sitting in this luxury apartment that he's just bought. And it's basically a cold turkey scene where, it, where he's withdrawing from the drug. And, and that as well is, is written in a very creative way. And I really enjoyed that scene. So. The book is a bit rigid, the prose is a little bit rigid, but there are certain moments in the book that shine in a creative way. Uh, the author also has a decent vocabulary, and I actually learnt a couple of new words um, after reading the book, so, so that's a good point. However, I mentioned earlier that Van Loon has a daughter in the book. And I also mentioned that the main protagonist kind of hits on her a little bit and speaks to her. But I noticed this, this was like a complete loose end. It didn't really lead to anything or amount to anything. So I was a bit confused about that. It was like a pointless element to the story in a way. Thank you for making it to the halfway point of this video. This is a quick message to let you know that I have a science fiction novella due to be released on the 1st of October titled Thanks for the Memory. Thanks for the Memory explores a nightmare scenario which could occur if our obsession with social media continues to escalate. If you fancy giving this one a go, the links are in the description box. Now, back to the video. The thing that I love about Limitless, the thing I love about this story is that it touches upon the subconscious mind. I've been reading about the subconscious mind for years now and it fascinates me that there's a kind of deeper part of your brain that makes decisions on its own. And it, it's fascinating to know that we've all got this kind of untapped potential. However, the story is based on a myth. There's, there's an old myth that we only use 10% of our brains and that, that's not true. It, it wouldn't make evolutionary sense for us to, to only use 10% of our brains. Our brain is a very expensive, costly organ. It uses up a huge amount of our energy, and so if we only use 10% of it, evolution would have kind of filtered that out by now. Natural selection would have, would have got rid of our big brain. So it's not actually true that we only use 10% of our brain. So the, the book is kind of based on a myth, but it's still true that we do have a subconscious mind and it's still true that a, a huge amount of our decisions and actions are unconscious. So for that reason, I do love the story and I love the film. Um, another film that touches upon this, by the way, is a film called Lucy. Uh, but Limitless is better, in my opinion. If you're going to watch one of the two, watch, watch this one, watch Limitless. Um, but yeah, th this story, it, it, it highlights that, it highlights how far a bit of intelligence and a bit of wit can actually get you. It highlights the fact that we, we don't, we don't kind of live up to our potential. Well, if we tried a little bit harder, if we wore nicer clothes, if we educated ourselves more, if, if we learned how to be more assertive, if we learned a bit of game theory in life 
we could climb the ladder a surprising amount. We, we, could, we could get the job we wanted. We could become rich and we could end up mixing with people like Van Loon. If only we could tap into this hidden potential that we, we've all got stored in our brain. That's what I love about this story. The book, after reading the book, I can say that the book is like another angle to the story. Or the film is like another angle to the book. I still don't know why, it's, why the book is called Dark Fields, by the way, but for some reason it is. If you know, let me know in the comments section. I, I'm going to end this video with two questions for myself. Question number one. Would I have enjoyed reading the novel if I hadn't watched the film first? My answer to that is yes, I still would have enjoyed the book. I would have found it a bit long still. It is a bit too long and drawn out, but I still would have liked it. So yes, you know, I would have liked the book. And the burning question is, what do I like better, the book or the film? I'm sorry to all book lovers out there, and I'm a book lover myself, but I do think that the film is better. The film is better because it's a lot more streamlined. The film edits out all of the unnecessary flim-flam. It's, it's, it's more to the point. The, the, the film is much more to the point and it's a bit more exciting. And there are some great visuals in the film as well that, that give it the edge. So if you're going to choose between the two, I would actually tell you to watch the film. However, if you want to, to indulge yourself in the book and the film, read the book first and then watch the film afterwards. That's my advice. But uh, both of them are good and, and it's an amazing concept and I, I do recommend them both. I think I gave the book four stars on Goodreads, so make of that what you will. Thanks very much for watching. I'll be back in two weeks with another book review. In the meantime, try to have a good day on this corporate, subconscious, pharmaceutical piece of rock we call Earth. Lots of love. Goodbye.